Warning, you are about to experience an unbiased, independent, objective, but opinionated newscast. For maybe the first time in your life, this is the fight for common sense. We are here to nominate a president. There is a President Obama that only Republicans can save. And Mitt Romney is a serial killer. He's Mitt the Ripper. Invest in roads and bridges. If you got a business, that you didn't build that. You know, lifting whole passages from someone else's speeches is not change you can believe in, it's change you can zero. That story is a failure. You it don't know what the failure. fuck you're talking about. Oh. We need to stop spending money we don't have. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Fight for Common Sense. You know, if you look at Washington lately, and I think a lot of us have this election season, it's almost obvious that so many solutions that they pass are simply void of common sense. Well, let me rephrase that. They're not void of common sense. They don't care about us. Those people aren't stupid. They're smarter than me or you. They know how to get reelected. They know what to vote for, how to ruin our lives, but to make themselves look good. And the fact is, they lie to us constantly. We see super PACs on TV. We see this and that. We see the media going for one person or the other. Nobody's really giving you the truth. And the fact is that we're all independents. The majority of us are. The majority of us are socially liberal. The majority of, of us are fiscally conservative. The majority of us want a better country. But Washington doesn't see that. They want to split us, and they want to give us empty rhetoric about denying that they're not. How does that work? I mean, we hear all the time in the RNC at the DNC, America's the best country in the world. Newsflash. We are in 16th place in education. We are in debt more than any country out there. Our, li our life expectancy isn't number one. By what standards are we the number one country in the world? Everyone's constantly referring to this constitution who even the Republicans don't care about, even though they always talk about it. We're spending trillions of dollars on wars, which aren't helping us. I mean, are we really the best country in the world? Are we really on the path to success? Can this even really be fixed by Barack Obama or Mitt Romney? You know, I listened to the RNC and the DNC, and I heard a lot, a lot of empty rhetoric. You know, I even heard somebody say that we are the future. My generation, the one who in 20 years is going to be supporting the baby boomers, the one that's going to be making all the GDP in 10 to 20 years. If we are the future, then why are you ruining our America for us? What do you think you're doing? If you care about us, then do what's needed. Not we'll help you get reelected. Don't say stuff, do stuff. And you know what, I'm not only talking to the president or the current congress, you think Mitt Romney's going to fix it? Well, why don't we look over the RNC, the DNC, and we'll see if he will. The Republican National Convention was about three weeks from today. Today, I think, is the 17th, 18th. I know it's Rosh Hashanah. And seeing as it's a new year, we should look back at what's happened this year. So going to the RNC. Now, they mentioned a lot of things. I know there was a big Paul Ryan line where he's like, we need to stop spending money we don't have. And then there was Mitt Romney who mentioned about all the bad things that Obama did. But you know, one thing that I have to say is, they didn't really use many numbers. I, I think it's obvious because they didn't present a plan. Mitt Romney openly refused to say what he cut. You know, I, I think the exact quote from him was, he lost the Senate race because he said what he'd cut, so he doesn't want to tell us now? What? If you're running for president, we should at least know what you're going to do. Now, I'm going to give some numbers for him since he obviously doesn't want to give any. Now, under the Republican plan, the Romney-Ryan plan, there will be about $6 trillion in spending cuts over, I think, the next 20 years, something like that. And that's, that's a fairly large amount. I mean, like, only that would have helped get us out of the deficit. But here's the darker side. They also want to cut taxes and raise defense spending by $4 trillion, leaving the difference only $2 trillion. Now, that's not that much. 
2 trillion over 20 years, that's not reducing the deficit. That, that's not even going to help. It's going to get worse by that time. So obviously, Romney and Ryan don't know what they're talking about, or just don't want to tell us what they're talking about. Now, the economy is obviously a major issue. It was mentioned 156,000 times online during the RNC and DNC period. Now, that's about more numbers than Mitt Romney gave us. But during the DNC, we had Bill Clinton come up, who was very, very widely expected, and he gave a lot of numbers. For instance, there was this one number. He said that the job count for Democratic and Republican presidents was 42 to 28 million. Now, just as one of the examples that Clinton said, that's kind of off for the main reason that you have to stay consistent. Obama's constantly been saying that the first two years or one year of his presidency was bad because of Bush. So how can you really count it by four-year increments? Shouldn't you count the two years, the two last years of a president's term and then the two next years? I mean, that's one of the things that they do, but then again, did Paul Ryan give us much truth? For instance, Paul Ryan during the RNC, he mentioned, he mentioned the GM plant in his Wisconsin city. He said that it closed under Obama. He made this whole sobbing story about how Obama ruined them. I mean, it's pretty hypocritical already since Romney's been complaining about all the Obama commercials, about him ruining those factories and staples and all that, but even, let's go with that. Let's say it, that that was true, but it's not. That thing closed like three days after Obama took office. I mean, really, Paul? Well, what can we expect from them? I, I want to take a moment and just think. Think constructively. When was the last time one of them told you the truth? I don't know. And that's the sad thing. That is the thing that's ruining our country. We don't know what's happening. Everyone has a different set of facts. Everyone can give you different numbers. Everyone only knows what they want to know. And one of the main reasons for that is because that's all they're told. The media, Fox News, MSNBC, even CNN, they don't tell you the right numbers. They don't tell you the real numbers. They tell you the numbers they want you to hear. With the Obama Medicare thing, where he double counted that money, they give you all different numbers. So speaking of numbers, Let's go to the economy. For the last few months, the GDP has slowed and we're not doing so well. I mean, like, yeah, the stock market's up, but the stock market doesn't really reflect the economy. The stock market can easily be manipulated by all the stimuluses, which Ben Bernanke and the rest of the Fed have been doing to save their butts. Now, look at this ball. This is a General Electric ball. It's a US company which has suffered a lot because of the economy. I mean. We're not doing well, and no, this obviously isn't Obama's fault, what started, but I think we could have fixed it faster. I think a lot of Obama's moves, especially lately, have been more to help himself, to help himself get reelected, than really to help anyone else. What Obama said, so far, has been, General Electric, you're suffering, don't tell anybody, I'll just give you some money, we'll just buy your stock some, and we'll make it look like you're not. Oh, you want to lay off some people? Well, you know, I think after all the money I've given you, you should shut them. That's Obama's strategy. Once again, Romney wouldn't be better. You can't just cut such large amounts of spending and expect the economy to do well. People will get scared. And fear is the worst thing that our stock market could have today. So who do we choose? Do we choose the libertarian, Gary Johnson? Well, I don't think so. The amount that he cut, that's way over Romney. But I can tell you one thing. Those libertarians, they're on to some things. And not even that. They are the real Republicans. They're the Republicans that are against wars and care about the Constitution. Now let's hold on a second. I don't think many of us really care about the Constitution, do we? Some document drafted 300 years ago, it's, it's practically obsolete. But, the Libertarians do, and whether for good or for bad, they're the actual Republicans. And I would be happy this election season if it was Liberals versus Libertarians. No, back when, that's how it was. And now we're just... Where are we? I mean, like, for instance, weed. Yeah, that, that's, 
not a very much discussed topic. I mean, like, Bill Maher mentions it a lot. He, he probably smokes a lot of it. Then we have, we have Ron Paul talking about it. And I have to say, a lot of people still think Ron Paul's running. He, he's like another Bill Clinton. They're all like, you've tried, you've done it, do it again. You know, I mean, like, I don't know how many people are chanting four more years for Ron Paul, but they certainly were for Clinton during the DNC. And there were some angry Ron Paul supporters during the RNC, I have to say. Like, I don't know what he's doing there. He shouldn't be around those people, because those people... I, I said I'd be objective, I'm independent, but the Republican Party right now is from Mars. So weed, it obviously would fix the economy. You know, people are like, oh, we're scared, people are going to be killing others for it. It's no more addictive than alcohol, it's no worse than cigarettes. It doesn't kill brain cells permanently, they've proven that. And no one's going to let you drive while under the influence of weed or alcohol. I mean, the fact is that weed, weed would make giant amounts of revenue because we could tax it extensively, like cigarettes. There are countries like Netherlands that have legalized weed. You know, we're constantly thinking about Europe. We're constantly saying we should copy their strategies, that their economy is better than ours. It's not in most countries. But that is one thing that Europe has done correctly, and that's legalizing weed. We can make special centers where only people, where people aren't allowed to leave if they're under the influence of it, but we should make it allowed. They'll save lives, they'll end this whole border problem. Kapush. I mean, like, then we come to foreign policy. Borders, and not borders on our continent. Fact is that there's recently been a lot of violence in Libya. What can we do about it? We can get the hell out of there! You know, they bombed us on 9-11, the main reason because of our presence. On that airplane, there were mainly Saudis and Egyptians, the two countries where we were the most present in at the time. We were trying to influence their governments, we were trying to change their elections, and no, I don't want you to feel sorry for them, they're maniacs. But making them angrier at her isn't going to make any better. Why must we make videos making fun of them? Why must we send more troops there when they try to kill our troops? Get the hell out! It's not our problem to be there. These are religious wars. Our country, we have an extensive separation of church and state. I mean, like, we can't understand, we can't comprehend how religion could run the government and run the people and spread so much propaganda. And that's a good thing. In our country, church and state, on their own, F us up enough. Together, they'd be horrible. And that's what happened in Iran. That's what happened in Iraq. That's what happened in Libya. And we should respect that and get out. They won't attack us. They won't care about us if we're not there. They attacked our embassy because we were there. If our embassy isn't there, who are they going to attack? Defense spending should be exactly for that. Defense. And that is why I agree with libertarians so much. Because defense is defense. Defense doesn't mean sending ships to countries on the other side of the world. Defense doesn't mean getting in people's lives who don't want us there. After 9-11, we attacked Iraq. Yes, we attacked Afghanistan, which we shouldn't have, but we attacked Iraq, which had nothing to do with 9-11 whatsoever. Neither did the Afghanistan. Al-Qaeda did it. Taliban did it. Why did we do it? Because Bush wanted to. And look what happened. They hated us then. Now they hate us more. The way to fix this is to get out of their lives. We should make sure that in 20 years, they don't remember who the hell America is. They don't deserve to know who we are. They are a beast. A flaming beast. And trying to fight them, it'll just help them get more and more. We simmer them down, and they'll relax. Now, of course, people ask about Israel, what are we going to do? And we can continue giving money to them. We can continue providing our support, but we should not race head-on into wars, like Romney wants to. Iran is not a credible threat yet, and the fact is that Russia is just waiting for it. Russia is waiting for us to do something. Romney already said that we're their number one geopolitical enemy, so guess what? There's that same feeling. It's a mutual feeling. They hate us too. And if we attack Iran, that will be the perfect pretense for them to attack. Romney's dangerous. Obama's dangerous for our economy, but Romney is dangerous for our foreign policy. And you know, the Jews of this country don't want him. The Jews of this country do not want all the help he wants for Israel. And I'll tell you why. It might seem illogical, but what they care about is minorities. If they're, under their ideology, if there is one Muslim in this country, and there's more than one, who's patriotic, who isn't 
as crazy as those radicals, then they're not going to hate all Muslims. They're not going to vote for Republicans who are going to start wars for no reason. They don't believe that's a proper defense of Israel, and they are right. And you know what? We shouldn't be barging into their business. If they, if they believe that we shouldn't be helping, if the Jews of America do, then we shouldn't help. We shouldn't be there. We should get our troops out of there. They'll save us money. They'll save us people. That's one of the ways to fix this. And it's so common sense. This is what I'm talking about. It's so simple. It's so easy. Why can't we think about it? And I'll tell you why. Because the military, those are votes for Romney. The military, they'll help create temporary jobs, which is exactly what Romney wants. The military, Romney has his money in it. It's that simple. That's the perfect example of how they're betrayed. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's not what that was supposed to sound like, but I gave it a try. This right here is a shofar. It is what the Jews used or used in the past to call, to come, to congregate in synagogues and celebrate the new year. And I would like to use this right here today to call for unity. And no, you don't call like this or like this. Call like this. Such a strange way, it seems. You blow into the small hall, into the small hole, the one which it would seem would be so hard to make a sound from. We could make the sound that this thing does by ourselves. Oh, we don't want to. We want to use this tool because we want to do what's best. We want to take the hard way, but the way that's right. And that's not what's happening in politics. So I want to use this thing to make a call. A call to unite us. A call to stop hatred and a call to fix this. To fix this economy and fix the way America works. Now, speaking of hatred, one thing that Gary Johnson and many other libertarians accept are abortions and gay marriage. I don't even know what to say about this. What a stupid topic! Our economy is on the verge of collapse. We could have another recession. We might even have a depression. We are in debt more than we've ever been. We're in debt triple more than we've ever been. And we're talking about abortions, gay marriage, Chick-fil-A. What the hell? Those are distractions. Those are distractions which Romney and Obama use from the real issues. If the Republicans care so much about the Constitution, then why are they not letting women have the right to choose? Why are they not letting people do whatever they want to? And why are we talking about this? It's sad. It's sad how our country refuses to focus on the economic crises ahead of us. Instead, we focus on crap. What can we do? And I'll tell you what we can do. We can make a difference. And that's what this is all about. I don't expect many people to watch this. I'm not a Bill Clinton. But if one person, one person is changed by this, just like the Jewish ideology we were talking about, if one person is changed by my ideas, it's enough to change the world. That is what Rosh Hashanah is about. And that is how we fix our country. One small step at a time. But they have to be useful steps. Now, I'm going to be like Bill Clinton here. You know, 35 minutes into this thing, it's already past 11, and then we take on the topic of health. Yeah, really, health. But I'm going to do this quickly. It's simple. The Affordable Health Care Act, which was passed, was probably the most significant thing that Obama has done. It's better than the stimulus, is for sure, because it actually kind of worked. Kind of. But... The issue comes in that businesses don't want to pay for their, for their employees' insurances. And many businesses refused. Obama let McDonald's get away with it. Obama let, let Walmart, well, Walmart was already paying, but there were a ton of com companies which don't want to. And we can't force them to, because they'll leave. Look, the fact is, a lot of these companies, they have giant revenues, they have giant profits. They could afford to do it, but you can't make regulations saying they have to. They have all the money in the world. They've been pouring it into politics. Did you know that Paul Ryan has 5.4 million in his congressional re-election bank account? That's more than anybody else for his Medicare plan. He has that because he is doing stuff that helps so many insurances and so many companies. And that money shouldn't be in politics. The reason why they're not fighting for us is because we're not the ones that have the money. 
They can buy our votes. They can trick so many of us with their super PACs. And where do they get the money to pay for that? From the companies that benefit from them. And that's how this is all involved. Everything right now in politics is about monetary value. And it's always been like that. Back in the USSR and all other countries, people went into politics to get rich. Here, they're not necessarily getting rich, but they're still relying a lot on that money. And it's not right. The people should be deciding, not Wall Street. And I'm not trying to wage this 99% against the 1%, because that's just not true. It's more like 5 against 95, if you want to be honest. And we all rely on each other, but there's a point where redistribution is needed to some extent, because our balance is messed up. Thanks to the Bush tax cuts, we're, we're out of hand. The 1% owns like 80%, and it's, it's not right. So what are we going to do about it? I'd like to end today with thoughts of the future. That's what you do on a new year. And many of us, this isn't a new year for us, but it's a midterm. It's a midterm break to think about the future. And here's the truth about the future. We need to do something. We're doomed whether we vote for Romney. We're doomed whether we vote for Obama. So yeah, we should choose somebody. You shouldn't refuse to vote. But what you should do is call your congressman, talk to Mr. Obama, and tell them that we want something different. We don't want to hear socialism. We don't want to hear wild capitalism. We want to hear the middle. We are the middle people. America has always been the middle country. We've been the ones that have prospered so well because we dared to try something that no one else had proposed. So let's do it again. I'm tired of hearing Mitt Romney. I'm tired of hearing Barack Obama. I don't even want the libertarian. And I'm not running either. I'm voting for common sense. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.